E-U-C-E-D. Used. It is not ringing a bell. <coughs> nope. Okay. Well. <laughs> okay. This is um, a poem about my days as a, a tennis player. Huh? Um, <coughs> I, in the um, 1970s, late 1970s, um, south um, in Georgia. And um, this was post integration, but we were still having a difficult time. Let me get this up here first. Uh, I'll go ahead and read it. It's called Used <coughs> for Cheryl. There's no longer a country club sport. Like everything else in the U.S., Southern tennis was taking on egalitarian. It's 1979. Recruited the other college president, Pipsqueak, and she's number one seed. Her power shot, a two-fisted backhand, blasted straight down the line, jamming many of Wilson into a chain link fence. A scream like Eddie on SNL, She's the only black face on the team. Always razzing, sarcasm. She can really make them laugh. She's best friend, one and all. For real. Until it's bedtime on the road. When southern blinds and old lines remain drawn. Um, I don't know if you know what I'm talking about here. We had to, uh, when we were on the road, we all stayed in hotel rooms together. And um, the only one who would sleep with Cheryl was me. And it was 1979. Right. Do you still know Cheryl? I've been away so long from uh, Savannah that I just, I don't, I, re I really don't go back there very often. Hmm. Uh, I lost touch with her, but now at the, in the age of Facebook, I may be able to contact her. Yeah. Um, this one's, have I read a new self riddle? Mm, not that I can recall. Mm, okay. A new self riddle, 1987. It's hardly morning now when their ruckus starts to rouse drowsy comfort. Time was, a child's summer night's dream might linger beneath a white work and a pain. Time was that ubiquitous wine dozed too. Now nature's a buzz on the deep south clock. Mr. Coolidge has a new kind of following. The drone sputtering in fits and starts before it pierces the air with a squeak. We're here, and we'll never leave, because we control the heat. We look for the cause, but it's nowhere, and everywhere. Dixie gadflies hissing in your head, cached underground till they shed their <clears throat> skin. Then one day, Find proof they're there, an empty shell, crusty opal, like some Paleozoic relic, the spitting image of what was the insect inside, right down to the tiny split hairs. Ridiculous thinking, something so ugly, so shrill, might inform culture. Much better than a life full of street frogs or a squabble of dolls, or even slick resonant clothes. <clears throat> Better that trio of comfort tempting us to believe the heat could never rise again. Uh, have I read Pickett? Mm, no. Pickett. Well, this is um, about um, my time during desegregation in the, in the Deep South. <coughs> and, um, um, 
It was not a very calm transition. It's called picket. It's offensive along the distant, narrow drive of a gravelly lot. Begins with row after row of angry white adolescents graced for trouble near a copse of scrub and slash pine. Though it's still the 70s, it's 90 in the shade, and even those accustomed to such oppression will <coughs> suffer beneath this part of history. Class is called on account of riot, youthful belligerence, hip to hip is on display. A white parody of black power in a pale armed picket of hoisted fists, reminiscent of a charge 110 years past. And while its cause was pronounced lost long ago, it's a battle still waged here. One preserved like a curious fossil in the amber imperfection of memory or as part of a yellowing scrap from yet another Civil War cyclorama. Defeat is unthinkable now as it was then. Um, we got time. You sure? Yeah, it's only, you've only been up here six and a half minutes and it's a small group, so. Yes. You need to say you're taking Dave's time. <laughs> okay. Let me find it first. I don't want to see it anywhere. It's called Oubliette, which is the um, title of my second volume. She's glaring through a skewed perspective mounted on dry stack, not sheet rock. Flimsy, really. Someone with a hammer and a mind. She can hardly stand anymore, quirked over a decolletage, scrimshawed from years of hoeing and seeding, row upon row of tiny kernels that pit the earth. Her view is mitered by this rough-hewn frame, cropped like a shot in a scrapbook. Its truncated crests and hollows of ash and hemlock. A bird pill frise. She's often combed for comfrey and skunk cabbage. For ginseng, too, when the harvest was poor. Higher learning lies just five miles away as the crow flies, the natives would say, to mitigate the real distance of circuitous hairpin roots which may as well be 500 miles for her. The sour woods now wind tasseled, mm -hmm. and there's just enough summer for regret. Some would say the labor's done. The last of the big boys have bowed to autumn. The crack of Silver Queen, quiet, save the husk and the stalks rustling the veil of an otherworldly entrance starch and iron of her youth, obsolete as in wrinkle-free cotton. So her tasks are done, and she's left to mull over the true nature of home, the hum of aging, appliances, and monotonous nightly news, glancing off stone walls. It's an old story for her. After all, after years of cleaning ovens that just need re-cleaning, of dirty laundry that must be washed and aired over and over. And always, too many hands for two feet coins of the realm. There are far fewer hands now, to be sure. Thick as fog skirting the hills, <coughs> memory settles on what's upstairs. One more vacancy to haunt days after three. With all the stored negatives she had, the back of crimped sepia reflections of seen and unseen moldering in books rather than going on display. The pouting face, petulant beneath angelic ringlets, paling in full sun, 
father, bold as brass, sparking his girl in black and white, his handstand smile upside down. <coughs> a depression era vignette of grandmother who's waited for eight to leave the nest before wrapping her fingers around the wheel of her husband, husband's Etzel. This is history, as it's always been. A mixed bag of slides held up to light, angled this way and that, right to left. Images always bound to be imprinted by a woman's thumb, then developed and hung along a stairwell. Views of a circumscribed world that just see, that just seems to keep repeating itself.